Bob, do you think Ken Carson is going to fall off? Uh, I mean, I don't... I give him another two years, at least, at least. I'm not saying he's going to fall off. Like, he's just got to evolve more. And I know he's doing his, like, whole low voice thing, but I just don't know if that's going to catch on as much as Project X-type sound did for him or Teen X Relapse, or like, the whole electronic rage. Uh, the low voice, I mean, it just doesn't hit for me as hard, but it really depends on other artists that come in the game in the next couple of years. Because right now, when you hear Ken Carson in the news or whatever, people are still excited about it. Because, I mean, he, Destroy Lonely, Yeet, Summer Somewhat, like, Sofago Somewhat, it's really those three. Yeet, Ken Carson, Sofa, uh Destroy Lonely. Those are the people who are controlling this new generation of music or like the underground sound. I know they're not underground, but like, you know what I'm talking about. They control that. Uh, they influence the sounds below them in the underground. So until somebody else takes that spot, kind of like what Yeet did to Sofago, like I don't think he's going to fall off with relevance or influence, you know? Is Sofago considered falling off? No, but he's in a different space. Like, I think he has a lot to prove. This next EP that he has to release has to hit hard. Or else I just think that people are going to forget and not care. Or he's going to be like a Don Tolliver type where he just has a totally separate fan base that isn't about hype. Like, they don't care about numbers. They just like him. And uh, he gets on playlists. It's, it's, it's not, it's more industry backs rather than organic fan base. Although he still does have that, but it's just not as large as say a Yeet or Destroy Lonely or Ken Carson where anything they do, if they're interviewed by TMZ or whatever, it's going to blow up in views. Whereas, you know, if, if Don Tolliver's seen out in public, like, I'm sorry, nobody cares. However, he might get a random number one song on Billboard just because, it lands on radio and then TikTok and like they just have a good melodic sound that has a mainstream appeal, you know? But yeah, also Fago's not really getting the push. I, I don't know about Promise because he could have, I think his management and him, they could have gone with the late the 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 major label backing, but they just haven't done it yet. They will do it at some point, I know for a fact, or at least, you know, if they want that big bag. They will do that, but they just haven't yet. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if Travis Scott can give him that push. I mean, when you're a Travis Scott, all you can really do is just give him a cosign, take a couple of pics with him, be seen out in public with him. But ultimately, like it's it's up to the label slash media group behind you to get you on all the pages and whatnot, whereas and, and have a budget behind you. But if you go with the independent distributor, you don't really get a big advance up front to use for the marketing, which every other label does. So that's the issue right now. Because you can take pictures with Travis Scott. However, if you don't have the marketing budget, that's not going to get spread around on all the pages. You know, like you're not going to get it posted on rap with however many followers they have or academics. Uh where they're going to get that out. Like, oh, Travis Scott's with a new artist for all the people who don't know who Sofago is to then understand or or learn who that is and then start listening to his music. You know what I'm saying? Like Ken and Lone, they're signed to Interscope. They're technically in bigger deals than Sofago is right now. Like I know Sofago signed to Travis Scott, but they probably had a bigger advance than Sofago did already. To put, and that's why they're bigger than him right now. He might have a bigger song than them, but... Like, you can just feel the hype behind Ken and Lone as opposed to Sofago right now. I mean, he's on tour with, with Nav. Come on. Do I like Afterlife or No Stylist more? That's a good question. Honestly, No Stylist was a really good album. So was Afterlife. I think if I was if I was going for a hype album, I'd go for Afterlife. Like, if I'm in the gym, if I'm talking about, like, just chilling, I will go for No Stylist. But I want to hear Yeet and Lone. That would be interesting for sure, especially because Yeet does have some of those more low-key guitar songs that Destroy Lonely been uh, rocking for a couple years now, or not a year. I don't know how long it's been. 
since no stylist or maybe before that i wasn't really that in tune with loan before that but uh i think it could work for sure whereas ken and ye already worked together i think yeah they have and then I saw it would be crazy to see Yeet and Cardi c collab. Of course, Lone and Ken to collab with Cardi too, but Yeet and Cardi would blow up the internet, similar to Uzi and Cardi. Because Uzi and Yeet have already collabed, and that did break the internet. Eh, kinda, kinda.